Good morning and welcome to Empowering Word Ministries Incorporated, our morning worship service. This is our last service of the year and we're so glad that God has brought us through once again. We want to start with a word of prayer from Mother Lena. Amen as she comes to the screen. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now, God. Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how, God. Lord, we thank you for all, God, that you have done and doing and will do in our lives, oh God. We thank you right now, God. We're so very grateful, Father, for all the things that you have walked us through, God, all our life. But this year, you have walked us through it, kept our mind stayed on you, God. We thank you, God. I ask today, Father, that you Continue to look on Empowering Word Ministry, oh God. Continue to look on Pastor John F. Clayton as you have given him to be the shepherd over this house, oh God. But we thank you, God. Give us to continually follow God, to continually eat what he feeds us, oh God, that our bodies will be strengthened and nourished, God, that we can yet strengthen and nourish someone else. God, we thank you, Father. We look unto you. We look unto the hills which come with our help. God, for you are our help. God, we thank you this morning for all that you're doing, all that you're changing, all that you're turning around, all that you're bringing us into. We thank you that this year now begins to leave us and you're walking yet into another year, oh God. Another year of your grace and your mercy, God. We thank you. Another year of your blessings, oh God. Lord, we thank you. Another year of your strength. Another year of your anointing, God, to do the things you called us to do. God, give us to be obedient unto your word, God. We thank you for your will over our life. Your will for the church. We thank you, Father. Teach us to be the best stewards that we can be, God. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. Touch all parts of the ministry. Touch the leaders. Touch the intercessors. Touch the musicians. God, we thank you right now. Touch every member, the ones that are joined in and the ones that are not. For prayer has no distance. So we send the prayer. God, search them out, oh God. We thank you. Draw by your spirit. I not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. God, allow your spirit to draw. Draw back who's supposed to be. God, draw unto the ministry who's supposed to come. Prepare us, God. Keep us as a prepared people, Father, that we are willing and able, God. That way the job won't be so hard, God. Lord, you love a willing vessel. Make us willing vessels, oh God. We thank you. We look to the author and the finisher of our faith, oh God. Continue to rain down on the ministry, God. Continue to rain down on us. Bless our families continually. Lord, a lot of loss have happened this year. But God, we still yet thank you because we're still here, God. We're still able to get up and tell you thank you. We're still able to share the good news. So we bless you this morning, Father. We bless you. We look to you. We lift you up. We magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you, Jesus. You said, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. God, draw, Father, because we lift you up daily, God, that you would draw. We know, God, that you're a God of promise, and we thank you. Thank you for letting us know who we are in you. We are victorious. We are overcomers. God, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Continue to strengthen us. Let the joy continue to flow. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you, God, that we can be a part of your plan for our life, a part of your plan for the ministry. Continue to strengthen pastor. Continue to feed him, oh God. And make us, God, those that will eat what he gives us, Father. We thank you right now. Teach us to continue to grow in you. There are so many levels to grow yet in you, God. No matter how high we go, there's still yet another level. So we thank you right now for continued growth. Touch everyone from the crown of their heads down to the very soles of their feet, God. Do a new thing in the new year. 
turn situations around. God, get the glory out of our life. Get the glory out the ministry, Father. We thank you right now for what you're doing in Jesus' name. And we bless you and we love you for we know that you first loved us, oh God. So we thank you. We humbly bow ourselves before almighty God. So we thank you this day and every day of our life. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen. Amen. It's nothing like a mother's prayer. We just, I know we covered for the rest of the year. Amen. So we're going to have praise and worship service by Minister of Music, Sir Jazz Carr Watson. A moment as he comes to the screen. Praise the Lord, everybody, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. We want to say thank you, Lord, for everything that he's doing, <clears throat> excuse me, for everything that he is doing and has done for us. Can you believe that we have made it to the last Sunday of this great and glorious 2020? And we've made it with all that it has been, with all of its ups, with its many, many downs. Um, but tell, tell somebody, well, you can't tell somebody, but if we was in church, I would tell you, we made, we made made it some of it some of us made it without COVID. some of us made it broke some of some of us made it blessed and, and bountiful but either way this morning we want to rejoice in the fact that we made it so come on let's just give god praise exactly where you are and let's thank him for being everything that he promised he would be to us for being our way maker for being our provider <clears throat> and this morning we just we just come to adore him can we do that <laughs>
church and say, I love him because he loves me. I love him because he loves me. I love him because he first loved me. his name right there. Thank you for being kind to the Lord, for the power and privilege of your name. We say hallelujah, hallelujah to your name. Yes, we do. We say hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's just take a moment to bless it with this last Sunday. Hallelujah, King of Kings, for being my Savior, for being my shelter. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, for being my way maker, my provider, my Lord. Yes, you are. We decree Christ, Christ. Yes, Lord. Holy, you're holy. Oh, my, I 
response I would be lost without you I would be lost without you holy I would be lost without you what are that bad time lost without you holy your holy Oh, 
rejoice in that thing this morning that he's holy. Good God, I thank you. Hey, you're holy. Hey, we can't get rid of your holiness. You're holy. Is there anybody that's grateful that this holiness, it can't be stained, it can't be tattered, it cannot be flawed. It cannot be scandaled. Hallelujah. The holy this morning. What's on the mercy under the Lord? I dare somebody to feel that thing. The name that's above every name cannot come down from his righteousness. Cannot come down from his word. Cannot be a liar. Cannot be flawed. It cannot be defeated. It cannot be tainted. It cannot be diluted. For the name of the Lord is holy. Oh, my son, that I'm all my son. We stand on your holiness. I said, we stand on your holiness. Might cost us some sleepless nights, but, but we stand on your holiness. Might cost us some transition of our circle, but, but we stand on your holiness. Stand on your holiness. Your holiness. Oh, we stand on it. I'm a sicko, no, no, no. When everything tries to take us off the wall, this morning we stand on it. Your holiness. 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 Don't just take time to get it, get it, get it. Holiness. Holiness. Hey. Thank you, Minister Music, Sir Jeff Carr Watson. <clears throat> Our scripture this week is a reminder of God's promise to us as long as we keep we keep doing our part. Lamentations 3, 19 to 26. Remember in mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Now we're going to have our 
church motto, you can say it along with me. This is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that's being established by his word. This is the church that love is building. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is Lord every day here at Empowering Word Ministries. And we are thankful to him for that. We're so glad that you took the time to worship with us. We know that everyone in the Zoom room is our family already, so you don't need a welcome. But anybody else that's new, we can be reached at the Empowering Word Ministries at gmail.com. You can also follow us on all social media sites, which are Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more updates as to what our ministry is doing. Now it's the part of the service where everyone can participate wholly. You can, we are having our offering time. We have two options for you. Uh, you can cash up us at dollar sign empowering, or you can mail your checks and money orders to Empowering Word Ministries, 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey, 08046. Again, you can cash up us at dollar sign empowering, or you can mail your checks and money orders to Empowering Word Ministries, 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey, 08046. We're going to leave that up on the screen while Pastor regales us with some of that good gospel music. Amen as he comes.
Amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I think we're doubly blessed here at Empowering Word. Not only do we have pastors that get us right with the word, but they get us right with the music, right up under God's bosom right there. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for our announcements. Uh, we just have a few. December 31st, that's this Friday at 1030 p.m. We're going to have our uh, New Year's Eve service on Zoom. We're going to bring in the Lord the same way we, we left out of the uh, last year. We're going to bring in the Lord once more. Amen. Bring it in with the Lord. Amen. January 17th at 1 p.m. or right after service, whenever service ends, because you know, God, we don't have no direction here with God. So right after service, we're going to have our general church meeting. February 2021 will be our 13th church anniversary. Amen. 13 years of empowering the community. Amen. <clears throat> Are you looking for prayer? Well, here's our updated prayer schedule. This is just for the rest of the year. Morning prayer daily at 6 a.m. until December 31st. Evening prayer at 6 p.m. will be held on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday only for the remaining weeks of this year. If you'd like to place a name on the prayer or stick and shut in list, please contact your church deacons, Deacon Sassy or Deacon Gigi, or myself, your church secretary. Um, if you're not able to reach one of us, you can email us at theempoweringwordministries at gmail.com, and those prayer requests will get through. Amen? And now it's time for the word of God. And the next voice you will hear is that of the, one of the greatest pastors in the land, Pastor John F. Clayton Jr. Amen, as he comes to the screen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I pray that you're doing well and that you're having a blessed holiday. It's so good to see all of you. Amen. I'm gonna stop singing with the uh, background music. Amen. Because I'll never get off the choir if I keep singing. Amen. With the background music. Amen. I'm trying to let the musician uh, ma uh, minister of music know. Amen. That the pastors need to retire. Amen, Pastor Dana. But if we keep, if we keep singing on Zoom, and holding up the parts, and especially the high parts, that's not going to happen. I wish each one of you a merry and blessed Christmas. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. I'm looking forward to Good Friday service. Amen. One of the preachers is on here that's preaching on Good Friday. Amen. And that's, I'm not Good Friday, on uh, New Year's Eve. Amen. Amen. There's several of you that will be preaching on Good Friday, but uh, one or two of us will be taking us into the new year. Amen. And so we bless the Lord. That is on Thursday night. There won't be any Bible study on Friday. And we will resume with our regular schedule after that. Amen. I'm excited about Jesus. Amen. And I hope that you are too. Thank you to everyone that continues to pray for us. Amen. You don't know. Amen. I hope I can live up to the prayer. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. I want y'all to know that's some lofty prayer. Amen. That's going on. But I thank God that you're asking God to keep each one of us, keep the pastors, keep the preachers, keep the teachers, the mothers. Amen. Keep everybody connected to God because that's the only way that we're going to make it. Amen. In this next iteration of what God is asking us to do. Thanks to Pastor uh, Dre. Amen. For that great word last week. Bless God. Hallelujah. That word is still in my spirit, amen. You might hear a little bit of that um, today. So if, if, if it goes to the left, amen, you can um, take that up with Pastor Dre, amen. Get your Bibles, amen. We're gonna be in Romans, the 11th chapter, amen. And I every time I read God's word, and I've been a preacher for a long time, amen, Mother Nina, long time, amen. And I still don't feel completely adequate, but there's so much more to learn out of God's word and out of the study of the word of God. And at some points in your life, you could read the scripture that could mean one thing, amen. And 20 years later, you can read it. It could mean something totally uh, different. The context could be the same, but how it becomes applied to your life and how open you are to the scripture, amen, can mean the difference between one interpretation uh, and, and its practicality to your life. So Romans, the 11th chapter, 
Um, th this is our casual Sunday, so I'm not trying to uh, be all preachy, but uh, pray for uh, Minister Sir Jans Carboxer. Romans, the 11th chapter, um, the 33rd verse, then going from going over into uh, Romans 12 and 2. All the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. And there's an exclamation point there. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of God, or who have been his counselor, or who have first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever, amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, my God today, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So today I wanna talk, this might not be uh, the last sermon of the year that you all might like, but let's go with what the Lord is saying. What I'm gonna talk about today is more is required of you, more is required, amen, more is required of you. So before I get there, I just wanted you to know that I uh, read these scriptures in the way that Paul penned them to the Roman church. When Paul wrote these letters, he didn't say, this is gonna be verse 33, this is gonna be verse 34, this is gonna be verse 35, I'm gonna stop there on verse 36, and then I'm gonna say, this is chapter 12, amen. Amen. When Paul wrote, he wrote letters just like you and I would write with our thoughts in mind and our intentions, but he was inspired by the spirit. And so that is why I read those scriptures all together. So in our scripture this morning, Paul outlines for the believers in the Roman church what is necessary and practical, listen, necessary and practical to see the fulfillment of the will of God in the church and in individual lives. Paul, in my estimation, is saying to them, and I'm saying to our church and each one of you individually and collectively, and I want you to hear me today, that more is required of thee. Thank you, Jesus. More is, and somebody said, well, pastor, I can't pray no more. Well, maybe it's not more prayer you need to do, but there is more, amen, that is required of thee. In this scripture, amen, the Romans were doing the ceremonial things, Yes, they were doing, so. they were Jews. They were, some of them were Jews and some of them were uh, Gentiles and many of them were doing ceremonial things. But Paul said that there was more that they were required to do. There are four words here that I want to highlight today. Presentation, if you're taking notes, you can take these down. Presentation, separation, transformation, and demonstration. Let me say that again for those of you that are taking some notes today. Presentation, separation, transformation, and demonstration. And so we're going to go through uh, all of these the best that we can. Amen. Then we're going to benedict and you all can go back to celebration. All right. Presentation. Amen. We are to present our bodies. Thank you, Jesus. To God as a living sacrifice. What does that mean, Pastor? We're to place or set beside or near, amen. We are to be at the disposal of God. You don't hear what I'm saying. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, when we present something, we do it freely with no struggle. Listen, I'm telling y'all more is required. I'm still wondering why some of us are still struggling with what God is requiring and asking us to do. In this next place, there needs to be less struggle and more yes. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. Pastor understands. Amen, I get it. But listen, for this new year, just give God a yes and less struggle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We must be willing to give ourselves over to God and to be at God's disposal. Uh -huh. Voluntarily, voluntarily giving all to God. Listen, I want to be clear. You are the sacrifice. Good God Almighty. Your money, oh my God, today, your money and your car and your house, 
amen, your spouse, your friend, whatever you have, your job is not the sacrifice for the Bible declares, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your what? Your body as a living sacrifice. You are the sacrifice. It profits us little to know spiritual theories and practice, practices and not give God what he wants the way that God wants it. Mm -hmm. God in this time is calling for us to be a place of presentation. So let me say what I mean by presentation. I'm not talking about a show. Oh my, we have enough show in the church. God is saying that you must present, you are the presentation, present your body as a living sacrifice by giving oneself holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, and holy, H-O-L-Y, to the Lord. If our bodies are not surrendered totally to God, what are you giving? Well, God Almighty, if you're not giving your body totally to God, then what are you giving unto him? The psalmist said, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. His demonstrated mercies over this year require on our part a new presentation of ourselves, listen to what I'm saying, as a living sacrifice. The mercy of God, you don't hear what I'm saying, the mercy of God, the grace of God that God has extended towards us over our lives calls for us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. We must yield ourselves to God in order to perform and carry out the next thing in our lives. Paul also wrote, yield your members to righteousness. When Paul speaks of the body, he is not just speaking of our physical shell that is made of the dust of the earth. Uh, he knows that the body performs that which the mind and soul dictates. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Listen, if you're having a problem with your body, that means your mind and your soul has not been yielded totally over to God. Let's stop the struggle. This is what I want to say to somebody today. Let's stop playing the struggle game and just yield to God. Good God Almighty, let's stop the struggle game and let's yield to the will of God. If there is a struggle going on, there is a war in your members and you have not conquered the ultimate flow. foe. That is the inner me. Uh-huh. Paul wrote this, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. O oh, wretched man that I am, good God Almighty, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he said, I thank God through Jesus. Listen, thank God for Jesus who laid the foundation. Thank God for Jesus who opened up the way. Thank God for Jesus. He leads me day by day. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Your presentation must be living. It must be worth being placed on the altar. We must, not, we must stop thinking that our sacrifices are living when all we have been doing is giving God dead stuff. Some of you think you're giving God living sacrifice. Listen, if you don't want it, God don't want it either. Therefore, it is, don't say nothing, Pastor Dre. Therefore, it is not a sacrifice. If it costs you nothing, good God Almighty, God doesn't want it. Hallelujah. That is the essence of a sacrifice. That means it costs me something. I want to hold on to it. I cherish it. I value it. And if I give it up, I have this sense of loss. That's what a sacrifice is. Stop giving God in this year. Stop giving God what you don't even want. God isn't a God that takes leftovers. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. God doesn't like leftovers, hallelujah. Give God what is difficult for you to surrender. Let me say that again, give God what is difficult for you to surrender. That is what a sacrifice is. The sacrifice has to be holy. I know some of y'all are bucking at this, but the sacrifice got to be holy. It has to be separate from common usage and devoted to the service of God. 
if we are to do the will of God, our lives can no longer be common. Good God Almighty. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. If you live in a common life, that's not a godly life. Oh, my God today. God requires us to live an uncommon, holy life. John puts it this way. Do not love the world, nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world, good God Almighty, I like how John says, the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Not holy because of what we wear or what we do or what we do not do. That doesn't make us holy, but holy because you've made a deliberate and intentional choice to follow the principles and concepts of him that called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Your presentation has to be acceptable. Uh, get the tape from last week. Your presentation has to be acceptable. You don't get to determine whether your, your sacrifice is acceptable or well-pleasing to God. You don't get that choice. Uh -huh. Let me say it a different way. What do you think that God thinks about your sacrifice? If you have this sense that you are coming up short on the sacrifice side, no that God is requiring more of you. The more is sacrifice. God will not settle for leftovers. God will not settle for second best. And some of us have been giving God second best and trying to pretend and fool God like we're giving God our best. Listen, I want you to know God cannot be placated. Hallelujah. God requires a, a sacrifice. Is your offering, your life, your living holy? Is it acceptable? Is, is it reasonable? Oh my, listen, I'm gonna tell you what reasonable means. Does it make sense? In your mind, does it, what you're giving God, does it make sense? Uh-huh. If you look back over your life and over this past year, is it reasonable to live this way for God? Is it reasonable? Does it make logical sense? The Bible says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with uh, God. Your friends and your family uh, will not understand what you're doing if you make this choice. If they are carnal and unsaved, sometimes the saved folks will not understand this requirement for the next place, but more is required of you. Hallelujah. The next thing that he requires is separation and be not conformed to this world. Look, God Almighty. We are to avoid conforming to the world's ways. Amen. If the world wears it, that don't mean we got to wear it. If the world sings, it don't mean we got to sing it. Amen. Amen. This will cost us something, but the reward is greater than the sacrifice. Our thinking and mindset must no longer be carnal. We cannot, hallelujah, afford to conform to the world. If it continues to mold us, mold your passions and mold your affections and mold your feelings and actions and behaviors. It is of the world and it does not please God. This is like the blind leading the blind. It is darkness trying to lead darkness out of darkness. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion, what kononia have light with darkness? And what accord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple, oh my, of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not, okay, we're going to get in trouble, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Listen, 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 listen. Our lives are to be what the theologians call imago day. Imago day. We are to be the image of God in the earth. Yes, you are supposed to be the image of God in the earth. We are to be the representatives of Jesus Christ. 
amen, not in just creed or letter or pronouncement, but with our lives. I'm so tired of people having creeds and degrees, but their lives are a hot mess and nobody will follow them. Our lives must be a living example of separation. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. And how shall then his kingdom stand? But Jesus told his disciples, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. He told them at a different time, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth shall not be damned. And these signs, good God Almighty, shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. There is power in a consecrated life. Good God Almighty. Power in a consecrated life. Power in a life that is separated unto God. Hallelujah. I don't want my life to be a laughing stock amongst the enemy. When I speak and when I pray, I want it to be with power and demonstration and evidence of the Holy Ghost ruling and reigning in my life. People want power, but they don't want the consecration and the separation that comes with it. You cannot be, hallelujah, of a thing and think you're going to deliver a thing. You cannot bind a strong man that has bound you. Separation and consecration because more is required of us as a ministry. Then there is transformation. Hallelujah. We must renew our minds and thus change our lives. Our old selves cannot do this work. Good God Almighty, I want you all to know, the old you will not be able to move into the next. Hear me what I'm saying. Oh, bless God, the old you is not going to make it in this next move of God. The new requires a different you. It requires a transformed you. We must position ourselves to be co-laborers with him. Change from the inside out. Change from the inside out. Not just changed, but transformed. The translation of this is a command. Be transformed. Don't think about it. Don't ponder it, but be transformed. It is a command. You are to stop conforming yourselves to this age, but are to continue being transformed by the renewal of your mind in order for you to be proving what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Stop, stop acting like earth dwellers when you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Good God Almighty. Stop acting like a pigeon when God has called you to soar and take up eagle's wings. Amen. Stop living beneath your privilege. Good God Almighty. Come up hither. Good God Almighty. Think differently. We used to sing this song, elevate your mind and let's go higher. Let's go higher in the Lord. Live differently. And Pastor Dana would like this in Star Trek. Uh-huh. There is a group called the Borg. Mm -hmm. There's a group called the Borg, sis. Yeah. Uh-huh. They have group mind. They have group think. Uh-huh. In this organization, is this antagonist called the Borg. Their thoughts are one with another. And they have this phrase that they say. They say that resistance is what? Futile. Then they declare that the target in question will be assimilated. So child of God, have you been assimilated into the Borg? Good God Almighty, have you been assimilated into the Borg? Do you believe, still believe that your resistance to the Borg is futile? But don't believe it and don't receive it. Compromise is voluntary surrender. You must fight in order to win. You must fight in order to reign with him and be seated with him in heavenly places. Yes, yokes can still be destroyed by the anointing. The only one mind that the child of God should have is the mind of Christ, a new creation and kingdom of God mindset. Conforming to the world is inconsistent with a life that is yielded to God. 
Compromise leads to conformity, which leads to defeat. You must take a stand in your life and have standards for your life. More is required. The word transform is in the passive voice, which indicates that this process is being performed by an outside force, good God Almighty, which is the Holy Spirit and God's word. Will you trust God to change you, to metaform, metaform you or have a metamorphosis? You cannot conform. Let the power and the spirit of God transform your mind. Let it change so that which is on the inside shows forth to the outside such that everyone can see. The last one is demonstration. We are to prove, oh my, we are to prove that we belong to God by doing God's will. We are to prove that we belong to God by doing God's will. The secret things belong to the Lord. So what am I saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is that there is the revealed will and there is the hidden will. Let me say that again. There's the revealed will and then there is the hidden will. Deuteronomy 29 and 29 elucidates that. It says the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but the things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all of the words of the law. There is the hidden will of God. God reserves this to himself. There are things that God wills and decrees, but does not reveal them to us in the present or at all. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. There's some things. Some of y'all don't even know how you got to this ministry. Let me tell you, that's the hidden will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the hidden will of God. Some of you don't even know how you made it to this day. Amen. How you made it through your life to this present moment in time. That is the hidden will of God. And I want to stop, stop right here for a minute and want you to know that I thank God for the hidden will of God. Because if God had told us and revealed some of us some of the stuff that God was going to do for us, amen, and through us and because of us, we would, good God, we would have sabotaged it all the way. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We would have sabotaged the will of God. So I want to thank God right here. I'm going to take a praise break, Mother Lena, and thank God that God hid some things. Good God Almighty. There were some struggles and some pains that I went through. Amen. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. But if God had revealed to me up front that I was going to go through those things, Pastor Dana, guess what? I would have changed my mind, but I would have never been sitting in this place. Good God Almighty. I'd have never been who I am today if God had revealed to me. Hey, good God Almighty. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm getting happy that God has some secrets from me. I used to want God to reveal everything to me, but it's all right now. I've gotten a little old to Pastor Dana and God wise. There's some things, Pastor Duran, I don't want God to let me know. Because that way, if God lets me know, then I have an option to mess it up. But God, just keep on doing what you're doing. Good God Almighty, keep on surprising me in your hidden will. Hallelujah. John Piper says that the hidden will is, is the will when God's sovereignty decrees and designs circumstances so that we end up where he wants us to be, even if we don't have any conscious part in getting there. Listen, some of you are here and don't even know how you got here. Good God Almighty, and you ought to be, but that'll make you dance, that the sovereignty of God wanted you to be here, even though you didn't want to be here. Good God Almighty, even though you had a plan, amen, the hidden will of God said, no, I want you to go this way, but you said, no, I want to go another way, but God planned it so and designed it so that you would be here. Then there is the revealed plan of God. God's revealed will, will is most clearly revealed in his word, which, which provides clear guidelines regarding moral and spiritual matters. It is revealed first in his word. It can be revealed through dreams. Anybody I have a dream? Good God Almighty. Anybody I have a vision? Oh my, about what the Lord was going to do and what the Lord was going to say. It's like that rhema word that's spoken by a prophet. That is the revealed will of God. Paul says to his saints that if you want a manifestation of the will of God that is evident, hallelujah, the revealed will of God, the good, the perfect and acceptable will of God, more is required of you. Oh my, hallelujah, more is required of you. Listen, and I want to say here what I'm teaching. There is not a good will, there is not a perfect will, and there is not an acceptable will. They are not separate. All of these are the will of God. Amen. I know that people 
and then want to divide them out and say, oh, I'm going to walk in the good will of God. I'm going to walk in the perfect will of God, and then I'm going to walk in the acceptable will of God. No, the will of God is all of these good, perfect, and acceptable. It's good because it's beneficial. It's outcomes. The outcome of the will of God is good. It will not harm you. Good God Almighty. It will not hurt you, nor will it wound you. It is acceptable because it's pleasing to God. It brings joy to God that he knows that we will do his will. And I'm going to drop this on you. The will of God ought to be pleasing to you. Once you surrender, the will of God ought to be pleasing to you. The will of God ought to be pleasing. Let me say it again. The will of God should be pleasing to you. God does not and would not have us do something that would not please us. The will of God is perfect. It lacks nothing. The will of God is complete for your life. All that is needed for the will of God in your life is for you to fulfill it. It achieves the desired end and the goal that God Almighty intended. The will of God, good God Almighty, nothing more, oh my, and nothing less, nothing else and nothing better than the will of God. Amen. Not, the, not more of the same, because some of us keep giving God more of the same. That's not going to work in this next move. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. That's not going to work in this next move. More of the same is not going to work. More of the same is going to keep you where you are, but more is required of you. Stop giving God more of the same and wanting more. Oh my, and not willing to give God more. God said he wants more that stretches us, more that challenges us, more presentation of yourself as a living sacrifice, more separation, holy and acceptable, more transformation in your mind that leads to a demonstration individually and collectively of the presence and will of God in your life. The glory of God is never present in strange fire, beloved, never present in strange fire. Uh -huh. Study that, children. The will of God is never present in strange, in a, in strange fire or in dead sacrifices. If you want to fulfill the will of God, the desire of God's heart, if you want to fulfill what God wishes, amen, the thoughts and desires that God has for you, present your body as a living sacrifice. Paul, in this letter to the Romans, moves from theology to doxology. Good God Almighty. Paul moves from theology to doxology. He moves from studying God to worshiping God. Good God Almighty. How do you know, Pastor, that he moved? I'm closing. How do you know that he moved from theology to worship? He said, all the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. That word there, oh, is an exclamation. You just don't say it, oh. You say, oh, the depth. Uh, then he said, how unsearchable are your judgments? Did you know there's some things that God has for you that are not searchable by you yet? And his ways are past finding out. Amen. He moves then in our scripture, our text, to practical daily living. I beseech you, therefore, based on the mercy of God, the loving kindness of God, the love of God, I have the compassion of a loving and merciful God, that you give God the more that is required of you. If you want to understand or get a glimpse of the depth of God's riches, oh my, oh my, and the wisdom and the knowledge of God, if you want to have an understanding of his ways and an understanding of the mind of God, God is requiring more of you, not more of the same. Amen. If more of the same was working, good God Almighty, Paul's letter would have sounded different. Oh my, good God Almighty. But I'm here to say that Paul wrote because he wanted to shift them into their next. He wanted to disrupt them and prod them so that they could be positioned to fulfill the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. He understood that more was required of them for their next level in God. The mercies of God are the ground and foundation of my sacrifice and your sacrifice and your worship. Because when you present your body as a living sacrifice, that is worship. All of my actions and reactions are based on the grace and mercy that God has shown me. Where would we be? If there was not a new mercy every morning, good God Almighty, where would we be if there was not grace for the day? Yes, there are eternal mercy, salvation, justification, adoption, 
peace and reconciliation with God and the indwelling of the presence of God. But where would we be without the daily grace and mercy of God? Morning by morning, good God I'm on. Morning by morning, new mercy I see. Minute by minute, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hands have provided. Great is God's faithfulness to us. Beloved, present your body, the totality and wholesome, hold nothing back from God. Be the sacrifice. Oh my, be transformed. Hallelujah. Fear not, the Lord says, I am with you. Good God Almighty. Oh my, don't worry about it, children. Fear not. God says, I am with you. This new place requires something different. Listen to what I'm saying. The new place in God requires something different, a new mindset, a new outlook. Hallelujah. It's new. And some of us are resistant to what is new. But God says, present your body. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God says it's going to stretch you, but it's going to strengthen you. God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, oh my, but a power of love and a sound mind. God said, I haven't given you the spirit of timidity. Oh, you don't understand what that scripture means. God said, I brought you to this place in this time, to the precipice of a new blessing, not for you have the spirit to draw back, Oh my, but the spirit to push forward. God has not given us, help me Jesus, the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. God said, take courage as I was with Moses. So shall I be, good God Almighty, I will be with you. Hallelujah, there are gonna be some hard decisions. Hallelujah, some risk, and some of you are risk averse. There's going to be, some unknowns in the next place of God next year. Hallelujah, but have faith, oh my, and trust God. Hallelujah, because faithful is he that called you. God will also do it. God let me know that he requires more of us individually, more of us as a ministry. What you have been doing has brought you to this place. Hallelujah, but more is required of us so that we could go to the next place in God. Hallelujah, more is required of us, beloved. Amen, more. Sometimes you're gonna to have to push through pain. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. You're gonna to have to worship through your brokenness. You don't hear what, oh my, you don't hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah, you're gonna to have to serve through your tears. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. As soon as a tear comes, you give up. Oh my, as soon as church hurt hurts, come. Amen, what you do is you run the other way. Oh my, but in this next move of God, Oh my, God is requiring us to push past. Oh my, pray until something happens. Praise until something happens. Hallelujah, into a new realm in God, a new possibility in God, where mediocre will not do it, common will not do. I don't know about you, but I wanna be exceptional in God. Hallelujah, I wanna have exceptional preachers, exceptional prayer warriors, exceptional in God, but we can only do it as we yield our members over to God and do our reasonable service unto God. Ordinary, I want you to know, ordinary will not do. Hallelujah, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Pastor, what is your job to push you and to prod you to be extraordinary, to be extraordinary, to be an extraordinary prophet. Hallelujah, an extraordinary pastor, a preacher or teacher. Oh my, an extraordinary spouse, an extraordinary husband or wife, an extraordinary child. How are people to know, good God Almighty, that God is with us if we are not extraordinary? Oh my, how are people to know that the hand of God is upon our lives if we are mediocre and common? Hallelujah, we must live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God so that we might prove what is the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. And that can only be done if we're willing to be sacrifices. Listen, the hymn writer said, as you're all on the altar, oh my, a sacrifice made. Hallelujah, does your heart, the spirit control. You can only be blessed, good God Almighty, and find peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. 
I don't know about you, but I'm willing to make the sacrifice. Anybody else willing to make the sacrifice? Listen, I don't have no other place to go but where God wants me to go. And I'm burned. Listen, Pastor Dred, I'm burned every bridge. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Mother Lena, they don't hear what I'm saying. I'm burned every bridge by living holy. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Good God Almighty. Oh, my. And in order for me to go back, I'd have to deny so much of what God did. Good God Almighty. There's nothing back there for me. The only way for me is forward. Hallelujah. The only way for me is to go into a place where no man has ever gone before. <laughs> y'all don't hear what I, oh, y'all don't hear, Pastor Daniel, they don't hear what I'm saying. Oh my, listen, listen, listen. The only way for me, Pastor Daniel, is to go where God has required of me, the place of more. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Listen, I get up every morning saying, God, show me more. Require more of me. Hallelujah. Some of you are living to your best because you're accepting common. You're accepting what is base. But I desire of you more, good God Almighty, that you would live a life of more, that you might be able to prove what is the good. Hallelujah. And acceptable. And per listen, I'm going to say this. And you deserve the more of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do don't settle for second best. God is not giving you second best. Woo! God has not given you second best leaders. Good God Almighty, don't accept a second best relationship. Don't accept a second best church. Good God Almighty, require more of the people that shepherd you. Re more, require more of the people that love you. Hallelujah, as God requires more of you. God requires more of you. And I'm gonna say something. Amen, I'm gonna tell you a story and I'm gonna let you go. I was in my office when we were in the office back in the day. And um, my boss came in and she looked at me and, you know, she's very intuitive. I love her. She's very intuitive. She said, oh, John, you know, what's going on? I said, well, you know, I got to make this presentation to the board and, you know, I don't always feel like it. She said, you know, sometimes, uh, John, you got to do things that you don't like. Good God Almighty. And then she walked out of the room. You know what that translated to me, Mother Lena? You can do it. Good God Almighty. There's more in you. I have confidence in you. Good God Almighty, that you can do it, that you can be it, that you can perform it. So you know what? I got. I stopped pouting. I stopped having a pity party. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Because you know what it was? It's my own insecurity. Listen, greater was already in, but somebody could see the greater and speak the greater in my life. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. She required more. And when she required more, I stepped up to more. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Stop hanging around folks that require you to be low and based. They're not going to like me as a pastor. No, they're not going to like this part. Stop requiring people that require you to be a pig in the pig pen and not soar amongst the eagles. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. I wouldn't marry somebody that wanted me to lay in the gutter. Good God Almighty. I wouldn't be under a pastor that required me that I could only do one thing or two things. My boss required more. And when she required more, I was able to step up to more. Listen, God says, come up hither. Good God Almighty, God requires more of us of a church. I don't know why I'm going this way. God requires more of us as a ministry. And because God requires more and God's requirements are higher, his thoughts are higher than our thought. God knows what God put in us, Mother Lena. God knows what he put in us and we're able to meet the requirement of God that you must believe that you're worthy of more. Hallelujah, and I believe that I'm worthy of more. I never listened to the old saints that said you couldn't do this and you couldn't be that. Amen. Because I, I checked, I wanted to know what their motivation was. I got to get ready to go. And if you didn't mean Jesus, I was not allowing you to speak negativity in my life. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And some of you have allowed people, thank you, Jesus, pastors and preachers and teachers and your mama and them, amen, and your auntie and them, and people that ride and die with you to speak negative things in your spirit. Listen, hear what thus saith the Lord. The Lord requires of you more. You took God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hear this word. Get this word in your spirit. God requires more of you because he put more in you. He invested more in you. God requires more of you in this coming year so that the will of God will be performed in you and through you. If the will of God is not done in this year, the fault will not be in God. You don't hear what I'm saying. The fault would be that we did not believe the report of the Lord that we did not trust the word of God. God is requiring more of us. Are you willing to step up?
I want every preacher and every teacher, every evangelist, every intercessor to require, to step up to the requirements of God because God requires more. Your more might not be my more. Hallelujah. But God's got some more. God knows. Listen, you can't fool God. God knows when your all is on the altar. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God knows. Don't do it. Yes, you can hang out with an intercessor, but God can know if that intercessory prayer is not in your spirit and that you're doing it for sure. You can hang out with the preachers, but God will know, amen, that you're not giving him all. Hallelujah. So that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God requires more. God requires more. I know you lack confidence, but God said, don't throw away your confidence because in your confidence, there is great recompense of reward. Well, the people won't believe me, but well, the people didn't believe Jesus. I'm gonna help you out. The people didn't believe Pastor John. They didn't, they didn't believe Pastor Dre. Good God ain't believe Pastor Dana. They, don't, they didn't believe, but guess what? Faithful is he that called you and he will do it. Amen. If I don't believe you, listen, children, if I don't believe you, don't mean that God don't believe you. Listen, learn how to separate God from God's people. Listen, if you can get free from God's people, you can be free. If you learn how to separate the voice of the people from the voice of God, you can walk in victory. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Listen, Moses said, well, God, when I go to your people, when I go to your people, they won't believe me. God said, I'm going to give you the key. Just tell them that I am that I am sent you. Good God Almighty, he had already been on the mountain. He had already knew that God required of him more. Hallelujah. God requires of you more. Live your life to please God. I want my ways. We used to sing that. I want my ways to please the Lord. Listen, I'm running, trying to make 100. I'm going to go back to the Baptist. 99. Good God and a half won't do. It won't do, Lord. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It won't do. 99. And, I had, and that wasn't about the saints. I wasn't running with the saints because they was barely making it to 90. I was trying to, I just want my ways to please the Lord. So this year, beloved, good God Almighty, if you want to fulfill your destiny, I beseech you, good God Almighty. What does that mean, Pastor? I'm begging you because I see what God is getting ready to do. Listen to what I'm saying. I see what God, I hear. I wish you all could hear and see what I see. I hear and see what God is getting ready. And I beseech you by the mercy of God, by every prophetic word that God has ever spoken in your life, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the changing of your mind, that you might be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You can do it. We can be it. And if your brother and sister believes in being mediocre, amen, encourage them. And if somebody else won't encourage, if, if nobody comes to encourage you, do what David did. David said, I will encourage myself. Good God Almighty. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Destruction. They had taken his family and took all of his, and the people around him turned against him. And David, I don't know if he had a mirror or he looked in a brook or, or he just looked to himself and looked on the inside of himself and said, I will encourage myself in the Lord. Greater is in you, hallelujah, but you have to put it all on the altar. What you're doing is not working, it's not working, hallelujah. What you did, listen, the food you ate yesterday only got you to this place, amen, you need to eat. Listen, give us this day, good God Almighty, our daily bread. Man should not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father, there's a daily stream oh my, of manna from the throne of God more is required of you. God bless you. Amen. I pray that you are strengthened today, that you are encouraged today, that you are challenged today. Amen. Listen, amen. Listen, the push on my back is hard. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Oh my, good God Almighty, the push on my back is hard. These saints aren't praying, the word praying God's will so I could just be a mediocre pastor. I hear them. Listen, I hear them. Listen, if there wasn't a God that could hear, I got to live up to the expectations of what they're praying. Amen. But I know there's a God that he is. So thank you for praying. Let's get ready to go. Gracious God, we thank you today for this word today. You require more of us. Hallelujah. Oh God, and I desire to step up to the more, whatever the requirements are, that we might see your glory as we saw it in the days of old. God, I pray in Jesus' name that we yield everything submissively. We give a yes to you and yield everything submissively to your will and to your way. 
which is good, acceptable, and, per and perfect. Thank you for everyone here. Thank you for their deliverance. Hallelujah, the word of deliverance that's already in their mouths. All they have to do is speak it. Hallelujah. And we thank you for what you have done. Thank you for taking us to the place that I have not seen and ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that you have in store for those that love you. Thank you because we're going to do our work so that you can manifest your glory. We're going to do our work, oh my, so that you can manifest your glory amongst the people. This is our prayer today in Jesus' name, amen.